Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another dish of the show. So my last uh, wine review for this session of stuff I've done six weeks in a row uh, or six episodes in a row. Hopefully I have some Skype interviews so this will actually stretch out to, I mean if I get the Skype interviews I've requested I could I could have almost three months of content here. Anyway, um, <laughs> I could have at least I have at least six weeks, maybe 10, maybe 12 weeks. It'd be great. So um, this is a wine and that I should have reviewed a while ago. So I got this wine sometime in October, maybe November. Um, my friends over at a Creative Palette, you know, sent out the email, hey, we have a wine for review. And I was like, yes, I want to do it because it's, uh, it's Ferritin Parrot Feast. Uh, I like the stuff that they do. And like, cool, I'll send you the wine. And I'm going through like all my wines and I was going through like the stuff that has like, you know, that says sample. And I was like, not on the bottle, but like in my notes, it says sample. And this came up and I was like, oh yeah, I need to review this. Which is funny because this is the last of the wines I'm reviewing. It should have been the first of the wines, but I try to do it in order I get it, but sometimes I don't. Anyway, so what is this wine? So this is the 2017, hold on, before I move on, I need to look at something real quick. That's what I thought. Okay, um, so this is the 2017 um, Ferritin Parafis Croze Hermitage La Matinere. Um, good, hopefully you can see that a little bit. Yeah, anyway, it uh, means early bird. And um, we can shut all that. I don't need that open anymore. So yeah, so let's let's talk about this. And I want to say that somehow I yeah. So it's funny because this this says fifteen, but the but the bottle says seventeen because I, I was looking at my vintage chart and fifteen was a an iconic vintage for the Rhone, and the image here says fourteen and this says seventeen. I was like. Yeah, 17, I don't have any notes other than it's just a good vintage, like a, a very a very good vintage. All right, so Crow's Hermitage. So what's going on with that? So it's in the Rhone, Northern Rhone area near Hermitage, um, which is, or Hermitage, which is arguably the best, the best place for Syrah. Um, you've also got Crow's Hermitage and Cote Roti, which is in the far north of Rhone that produces some spectacular Syrahs. Um, so yeah, anyway, so uh, they, they kind of call it baby Hermitages um, because it's near Hermitage. There's 4,200 acres under vine and 11 communes. Uh, they produce between six and seven million bottles as an appellation. Uh, it's pretty big. So um, this is one of those appellations uh, that you really need to make sure you, you choose the producer properly. You can't just, just can't just like pick anybody. You know, Hermitage, pretty much anyone who's doing Hermitage or Hermitage, um, it's, it's going to be good, right? Uh, coat routine, similar, you probably should go with certain producers, but in general, if it's coat routine, it's probably going to be pretty good, right? Cross Hermitage, you should probably know the producer. It's not too much of a crapshoot. It's still going to be good stuff, but yeah. Anyway, um, so, uh, oh yeah, 26 bucks is the suggested retail price. Anyway, um, so they say reasons to place uh, this particular wine uh, on the short list of wines to look out for include in the tough 1960s when vineyards were being abandoned, 
uh, Michel Ferreton uh, bought prime parcels in central and southern Crows Hermitage, specifically in Mercurol and Beaumont Montu, uh, soils forming the relatively flat plateaus and terraces south and east of Tain L'Hermitage. Uh, typically comprise layers of pebbles from various glacial periods mixed with red clay. Towards uh, Lonage and the commune of Gros Hermitage exist pebbly terraces covered with less or uh, kaolinic white sands. Potassium residue in the soil makes for fleshier, rounder wines. Much of the central and southern portions were once planted with fruit trees, especially peach orchards, which need, which need a lot of potassium to grow. Potassium is very important. Uh, not just for us as humans, but for um, grapes and peaches and lots of other agriculture. Um, a moderate continental climate means dry, hot summers and regular rainfall for much of the rain remainder of the year. The temperature sweet spot. Cooler than the southern Rhone, yet still sufficiently far south to produce earlier ripening grapes. Gros Hermitage generally yields more approachable wines. Uh, sunlight, like a window cleaner, the Mistral which is this uh, pretty potent wind in the Rome, uh, clears the air, enabling more sunlight to shine through, resulting in healthier vineyards and more balanced and fruitier style wines. And just in general, the Mistral in the Rhone is, just does that. It, it also can be damaging to the grapes. It can also prevent flowers, um, can, can prevent fruit set, and all kinds of bad things, but it also can provide some really good benefits to uh, viticulture. Anyway, um, so La, La, Martin, La, La Martiniere, La Martiniere, here we go, got it, got it, uh, means early bird, and it was the affectionate, affectionate nickname given to Colette Ferreton, ever the early riser, uh, by her winemaker husband, Michel Ferreton, whose father, Jean Orens Ferreton, founded the winery in 1946. Uh, they were a pioneer of estate bottled wines, too, which I don't remember that. So I probably knew that, but I probably forgot that. Um, they built a reputation as a quality house. They definitely have some top-rated wines from prestigious appellations, classic overperforming values for everyday enjoyment. Um, let's see here. Let's see what else. Uh, this wine belongs to what they call their tradition collection of negotiant wines, each with a textbook example of its appellation. It Tradition references uh, the traditional approach of the Rhone of blending from various vineyards. In this case, 100% Syrah because it has to be. Um, fruit comes from both estate and neighboring vineyards. Um, let's see, after the grapes are destemmed, vinification takes place in thermoregulated concrete vats. Color and tannins are extracted via punching down and pumping over. And this maceration lasts for 20 days. After vinification, the wine is aged 14 months in concrete vats, uh, conducive to more rounded tannins and the preservation of maximum fruit. Um, so let's talk about concrete real quick. So concrete versus oak versus stainless. So stainless is considered an anaerobic uh, or reductive environment. So if you're going to age or let the wine sit in a stainless steel tank, besides the fermentation part, um, it has it's not going to get any oxygen. Really, it's not. Now, you can do micro, microx or micro-oxygenation in stainless, I guess, because there should be a way for the, for the gas to, to escape. Um, so you could do that. I think I've seen that actually at wineries. Um, oak, oak in and of itself, is porous. Not super porous, because if it was, then it wouldn't hold the liquid. But it lets micro-oxygenation happen naturally. Um, through the through the pores and through the the gaps in the wood, concrete concrete's kind of this middle ground thing. Concrete is is not porous, but if it's unlined concrete, then there's little air bubbles in the concrete, so it kind of does little microx in there. If it's lined, I'm sure there's still like imperfections in the lining, so you can still get some. Um, uh, a little bit of microx in there. It, it, the, it's, a, it's sealed, so there shouldn't be any oxygen getting into it. It's just if it's already in there, um, in those little crevices and the little bubbles and the little like imperfections in the concrete itself, then that's what you get. All right, so let's check this out. I'm excited to check this out because you know why? I love Syrah. 
I love Roan Syrah, specifically. But I also like Cali and Washington or United States Syrah that's made really well, especially if you can evoke some of the really good old world stuff. Um, Australian Shiraz, it's good, but a lot of times it's just really, really just so fruity. It's kind of like over the top, but you know, sometimes that's what you want. I mean, that's like really good stuff. All right. You know, I need to get these guys on the show. I need to get Greg, is it Greg Lambert? I think that's his name. I need to get him. I actually, I just sent Corvin an email and they didn't even reply. I love you guys, but man, a lot of times you just like, you just don't like you ignore me too much, but I, I do have to say you did really help me out when I was really having the major problem with this. Not this one, but with my older one, you did come through. It took a while. Like I really had to like bug you about it, but you did send me a new one for free. So I, I can't really complain, but I think Greg, right, Greg. Yeah. You need to, you need to be on my show. Cause I really, I really like your stuff. Don't swirl, man. I'm actually pretty good at not swirling immediately all the time. This is when I start getting that talking and like that little nervous tick. I just start swirling. All right. So let's, Let's stick our nose in this thing. 2017, 26 bucks, if I didn't say that already. So I'm getting red and black fruit. I was also getting a little bit of that bitter coffee. I'm not a fan of, by the way, especially bitter coffee. Like the smell of regular coffee is always really nice, but I don't like drinking coffee. I don't like the taste of coffee, especially because coffee is like super bitter. I don't care how it, I don't care how much sugar and cream you put in there. It's still like this, the flavor of coffee is so like. Anyway, I get a little coffee in this. A little caramel, almost like, was it a mochaccino or a mocha type of thing? But I get, I get some spice. I'm not really getting the black pepper I normally would expect or even white pepper necessarily from Syrah, but it, it's kind of in there. I think I'm looking for it, so I'm just kind of like, just kind of let it, kind of let it do its thing, and see if I get it on the palate. And let's we'll do a little swirl. Yeah, it's it's like more of like a, not a pepper spice, but like a like a regular like spice. Not we're talking like the clove, and not talking oak spice. We're talking like because there's no oak, um, but like 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 flavorful spices like. Maybe like cumin or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Not quite cayenne, but. Yeah, that, I think that's what I was confusing with the coffee smell. Because the coffee, now that I'm looking at it that way, I don't really get coffee. You know what? There's also like this kind of bitter olive, which it should be in there. Because Syrah should have some olive. It's more of a green variety than a, than a black variety. But yeah, there's like bitter, just, it just bitter. It's a bitter wine. Why are you a bitter wine? It's an outstanding day. Don't be bitter. Let's taste it. There you are. All right, so it doesn't really taste bitter. I mean, it's it's there's a bitterness to it because it's old world. Um, the fruit is finishing dry, so you've got that blackberry and really black fruit. Not a lot of red fruit, not really a lot of blue fruit. It's more black fruit than anything else. But you've got this like kind of not tarragon, maybe a little sage. Tarragon, uh, oregano, like, you know, dry herbs, um, more of a dry herbal thing going on here. And not the herb, though sometimes you get that tapenade. It's now coming through like really like tons, like green olives to the, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, wow. It's like olive bread. Man, it is like. It is like lingering. 
not the biggest fan of tapenade, to be honest. I mean, olive bread, though, I kind of I kind of dig olive bread. Green olives, I'd, I'd rather have black olives, but sometimes green olives can be good. It depends on, depends on the green olive and maybe what else is mixed with. Yeah. Wow, let's, let's, let's taste some more of that. Yeah, there's also um, not really a cedar box. There's just a, um, there's a floral component going on. Not quite potpourri, but I'll maybe a touch of that. So you've been noticing like the, the shadows here, because I've got the, I've got the green screen lights kind of like in line with me and they're aimed at the green screen. And so I've noticed since I've had this set up this year that when I wear my glasses, I have like that shadow there. It's nothing I can do about it other than just like not wearing my glasses, then it'd be awesome. But then I can't see anything. But right now I don't need to read anything. So I mean, I'm literally not blind, but okay. You wanna know how, how blind I am? All right, so let's, I'll, I'll pull the bottle here. I'll, I'll, I'll go sideways so you can see how far away the bottle is to where I can see this, the word crow's hermitage sharply. So that's, yeah, that's like right. It doesn't feel like it's that close, but I know it is. Like, again, I can see the 2017, I can see everything really clearly. Like that, right, just that, it's, it's starting to get blurry. So I, I just can't, I can't not have my glasses on. Quick story. When I went to Germany, I didn't bring my glasses. So all I had was my contacts. So I had to take them out every night. So that sucked. I mean, I, I, I basically, as soon as I took out my contacts, I just went to sleep. I did attempt to like have the iPad or, or my laptop, but I had to have it so close. It just, yeah, it just, it was bad. Anyway. I was, I was kind of, in, wasn't in a rush, but I was kind of in a rush to, to, to leave. And I had everything packed, but then when you're like getting ready, I didn't put my glasses in my, um, in my, you know, uh, whatever little bag thing, you know, your toiletries bag. Um, so yeah, so I, I worn, I worn my contacts. I had gone out the night before and I went to sleep in my contacts. So I just wore my contacts. I just didn't take them off. So that also sucks because I'd had my contacts in for like more than a day. So kids don't do that. Hmm. So I'm getting some, some peppery spices, some herbaceousness, um, a drying out, a bramble, um, more black olive than green olive, but I bet you that green olive is going to start coming back here in a minute. Um, yeah, I like this wine. I kind of wish there was something else really going into it. I really wish the black pepper and the meatiness that happens with Syrah was a little more prominent. I feel like it's really kind of an undercurrent and it could be something where it will come out a little bit more later. Um, it's $26. It's not, it's not expensive. I mean, it is expensive to some people, you know, anything over 20 bucks is a lot of money. Um, especially, you know, with not having a job or maybe you're making less money because of COVID and hopefully at this point things are better, but I know we've already gone through one spike and by the time you see this, will probably be a second spike from 4th of July. And there'll probably be some people that haven't gone back to work. I also know I have some friends that are, are, are back to work, but they're having to take a pay cut because the business is not there. I mean, they're, they're slower. So they're, they're taking a pay cut. It's either that or get fired or get furloughed or whatever. So, you know, $20 or more on a bottle of wine can be a lot of money. But I think it's a good wine. I think it's a well-made wine. I think it needs some age, to be honest. I think it needs, I think it needs a little time in the bottle to kind of really develop. 
or it just needs to be aerated. I like the wine a lot. Oh, I don't have the press bowl side. Not that they pay me, they don't. I pay them. But I like to... So I joked with my friend a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, that for some reason, I ever, if I ever left Pressable as my uh, WordPress hosting site, all I have to do is just turn this around, and it's just that logo. But it's also the one that's more beat up. This one is actually, everything's still in pretty good shape. <laughs> anyway, I have no plans to leave Pressable. You guys do a great job for me. I like the wine. I think it's pro I think it's priced appropriately. I think it's a good value. Um, I think a lot of people will like this Syrah. I like it. I think I was expecting a little bit more. I think I was getting a little, I think I was kind of getting a little overexcited for it. But I also think that this one has got potential. I think that's that's where I'm I'm at with this wine. I think it's got some potential. I think if it had another year or two of age on it, that it will really kind of open up some more. I think it's a little tight. And I think I just, yeah, I, it's just one of those where you're kind of like, you're looking at the potential, not how it drinks right now. So it's going to be hard for me to like hold on to this wine for even for like six more months. Now, that's the great thing about having this Corvin. So someone asked me how long I've allowed, how long I've left something quote under Corvin. And I had 18 months. And the wine was spectacular still. It was a Don Melchor. And then I had a Ridge Zinfandel that was six months. That was my, uh, that was my kind of gorilla, um, uh, my gorilla uh, episode, whatever, filming, whatever. I just held the phone in my hand and I was talking about how great the, the wine tasted six months later. And um, I, think, I think the episode is just called Corvin Six Months Later, which actually has a lot of views, which is cool. But yeah, um, I mean, I, this is one of those wines where I'm like, oh yeah, I could just lay it down for at least a year. And I mean, I may revisit it sooner than that because I may just feel like drinking it. Anyway, it's a good wine. I like it. I like it. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode. Um, best thing to do is to click the like button or click the like, click like, hit the subscribe button, uh, tell your friends about it. If you want to support me, um, you can also hit the PayPal link in the description below. There's also affiliate links to Amazon, and uh, you can also friend me up. I haven't been on the socials a lot because I'm doing my study thing. That's where the beard came from. By the time you see this video, the beard should be even more epic. So that'd be kind of cool. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.